Hi everyone and welcome to this video in which we're going to chat about designing costumes for LARP. First of all I want to chat about well the basic design where to start. Then I want to chat quickly about where you can gather your stuff for costumes because that will influence the way that you design your costumes. And after that I'm going to run through some of my costumes and tell you all the decisions I made to come to well my costumes. So first of all, how to start designing a costume. There are multiple ways to go about this, so I'm not going to talk about all of them, but I'm going to talk about what I usually do when I have to design a costume for LARP. Basically, there are two main ways to go about this. You can either design your costume and then think about your character, or you can think about your character and then design your costume. I personally prefer the latter because it is really nice if you can tell the story of your character with your costume. What do I mean with this? For example, you are going to play a smith. If you have smith accessories, hammers, bags with stuff that you can use in the smithy, you can tell the story of your character. And that's a really nice way to design costumes for LARP. But to go even more to the basics. Where do you start? Personally, when I'm going to a LARP and I know I'm going there as a player, I'm reading through the website, reading through all the available information and slowly from there start thinking about what I might find interesting to play and what kind of character I want to make. Once I've got my character, I start thinking about, okay, what does this person wear? Because that's a really interesting way of looking at designing costumes for LARP. You are playing a character. You are playing a person with a daily life, with a wardrobe and clothes. I don't really think about it as a costume. I think more about it as a, from a practical standpoint, what does this person want to wear? And that's also where I start. Really important terms when you're designing costumes is soft kit versus I think hard kit. Soft kit as the name implies is all the clothing parts. So tops, pants, capes, all that sort of stuff. Because you are playing a person it has to wear clothing. And that's also a way that I like to design my characters. I like to start simple. As I'm going to show you later, I'm going to go through this costume event per event. So first of all, we're going to start thinking about a basic kit that this person might want to wear. And with this basic kit, you also have to think about the person as a character. Is it someone that has to convey prestige and status? Or is it someone who has to move around a lot and be flexible and be able to move in their costume because that's something that you can do a lot with. This is also the moment where it's getting important to keep in mind where you are going to gather your materials. Because most people will equivalent designing LARP costumes with crafting, but that does not have to be the case. You do not have to make your entire costume yourself. You can either go to second-hand clothing shops and thrift stuff and alter them to fit what you want. Or you can buy them at LARP shops, uh, especially here in Germany or the Netherlands itself. We are starting to get dedicated LARP shops. These are mostly aimed at fantasy, but sci-fi is slowly being added to their collections as well. Or you can go to dedicated LARP thrift. Facebook marketplaces, other digital marketplaces, where people trade their second-hand LARP items. So those are even more dedicated. Or you can have someone else make your costume. But in that case, you can also probably chat about them with the design. But you still have to give a basic idea of what you want. So nonetheless, it is smart to think about it. Once you have in mind the way that you want to either collect and assemble your costume or whether you want to craft it you can start thinking about the specifics. As I already mentioned before I love to keep my kit simple for the first one or two events. It's also a case of not wanting to spend hundreds of euros for an event that I'm not entirely sure how often I'll play there. 
So that's also a reason why I like to keep my kit simple the first few events and usually stick to soft kit. I think the easiest way to explain all of this is just to start going through some of my costume designs. And because it's the character that I played the longest and the costume that I'm eventually the most proud of, I'm going to run you through the costume of my character Vinya. Vinya is a faun who ran away from her parents and wants to become a great fighter. But she did not immediately arrive as a fighter. So that's something that I wanted to express in the costume. So let me undress this mannequin to how I arrived at the first event. There we are. It's quite a big difference, isn't it? My mannequin unfortunately cannot wear pants, so they're on the table there, but I can probably insert a picture somewhere where I'm wearing the entire costume on the first event. Yep, there we go. To reiterate the design choices that I made here, I specifically started this costume with the idea that I wanted to make every single thing myself. I almost succeeded. The swords I did not make myself and I did not make the lower belt myself, plus the sword frogs. But other than that, I wanted Vinya to be a happy-go-lucky kind of girl that just had these grand dreams of being a great fighter even though she hardly knew what she was doing. So that's basically what we've got here. Always it's super super handy to have a kind of bag in a LARP. So make sure you always have either deep pockets or something where you can carry around stuff. Because you will always have stuff. Whether it be a character sheet, plastificated cards for items, potions, have a bag. I had some skill points left over so Finya can do some basic healing. So I have a row with bandages. And of course she wanted to be a great fighter so I gave her dual swords for fighting. Then on the pants part, Finya is a faun. So I made really wide fluffy pants and I took a pair of old shoes and with velcro I can stick my pants to the shoes. And with warbler and foam I made some hooves on top of the shoes. No one sees the way that this is attached. But I think the end result looks quite nice. Not a whole lot will change about the pants, so that's all I'll say about that for now. Considerations that I had to keep in mind with this costume is Vinya is a fighter. Which means that I wanted to have a maximum amount of movement. So the pants are super loose. I can move around them in any kind of way I want. And it's also the reason why I did not go with uh, found specific legs, you know, the people who pad some part of their legs. I just wanted a basic idea of a faun and I think with the pants and the hooves on the shoes I kind of got there. It's the same for the shirt. It's a nice loose shirt and also this event has three events in a year. One in spring, one in midsummer and one in autumn. So I chose linen for the shirt because that's still doable in high summer. Also the pants, they might look super warm, but they're actually really breathy because they're so loose, so it's still doable. If there were super hot days, the easiest way to cool off in that costume would be to take off my shoes for a bit, just air my feet, and then I would have cooled down. Just mostly keep in the shade and drink water, those were more important. But anyway, this was Vinya on her very first event. And from that moment onward, I decided to add at least one thing every event. So let me add everything I added for the second event. There we go. Vinya at her second event. It might not be the biggest difference, but Vinya realized that being a fighter, she might need some protection. This was also the moment where I personally decided that I wanted to pick up some leather work. So enjoy my very first leather work pieces ever. I made a set of bracers and on the first event I also realized that in this bag which has slight gaps on the side money might fall out really easily. So in line with the bracers I also made a tiny money pouch. It's still actually one of the handiest items I have for LARPs. Just a 
tiny, tiny pouch, which is perfect to hold a few coins because I'm not usually a player who plays with a whole lot of money. Just a small pouch like this is really useful to have. And I think on the second event, weapon-wise, I added a shield. But I don't know where that is currently. <laughs> so that's what I did for the second event. Now let's see what we did for the third event. I can vaguely remember not having that much crafting time between these two events. So I only added a small thing crafting wise, but visually it made a really big impact. I added a front and a back flap, which added to the overall greenness of my character. Which, if you look at group pictures of many LARPers on these events, I actually stand out really well because I'm just so very green. But oh well, again, it doesn't always have to be big additions, just something small and soft kit can visually make a really big impact in completing your costume. Between this event and the next, I did have more time to craft. So let's see what we added for the next event. There we go, the shoulder armor. By this event, I had figured out that Vinya did start to understand a bit about how fighting worked. So I figured she needed a big armor upgrade. And this was also after I did a few letter crafting workshops. So I wanted to do something with quite a bit of letter tooling. So I made this shoulder armor with on every panel references to antlers and deer. Aside from that, and this is a very small addition, I also added this tiny extra bag. I had made this for another costume to have my business cards. Considering this event also used business card sized laminated cards, it was really nice to have this. And let's be honest, Having a few belts with lots of stuff on it definitely adds character to a costume. And I guess that this is it for Vinya, because soon after I stopped playing this character, but I'm still really happy with how the costume came to be. What I mostly want to show you guys with this is that you don't have to design a complete costume in one go. Start simple and add something, because then you can also add stuff that are, re that are references to in-game things. I mean, this costume build-up, it still misses a belt, a belt full of keys, but that was an in-game item, so that had to stay at the game. And that also added more character, because then I ran around with three different giant belts. I mean... <laughs> One last thing about this costume, but also many of my other costumes that I do want to show, is my best LARP purchase ever. Which is plainly one and a half meters, of a wool. I saw this on the fabric market for I think 15 euros per meter and I decided let me just buy one and a half meter and maybe I'll make something of it. I never did. The only thing I did was finish the edges and still this is my best LARP purchase ever. Reason is it's a great layer for late at night when it starts to get cold and you just want something warm or even rain protection. The way I use this is very simple. I just wrap it around my shoulders. I grab a Fibula pin. And just like that, you're warm. Is it raining? Because I've got it double layered, I can flip up the top layer and have a hood, cloak, whatever. As I said, just one and a half meter of wool is my best LARP purchase ever, because it's just so very versatile. So if you ever come across wool, um, just get some of it, especially if it's on the slightly cheaper side, then I can definitely recommend it. So yeah, as I said, my best LARP purchase ever. This has seen so many use in so many different characters. Also, if I'm Going to a LARP as an NPC, I always bring it because it's also really neutral, so it fits with a lot of stuff. It fits fantasy settings, it fits sci-fi settings, it fits normal day settings. Occasionally I change up the pin, but other than that... And that brings me to another very important point about designing costumes for LARP. Think about when you are going to wear them. Are your events in high summer? 
Are they in the middle of the winter? Are they all year round? What is your climate? Or if you're going somewhere else, out of the country, what is the climate like where you're going to? Think about it. And the best tip for any kind of LARP costume, layers, layers, layers. Make sure you can add more warmth or take warmth off. Try and have at least two, possible three layers. For this costume, Aside from what you're seeing here and the woolen cloak, for the spring and autumn events, I also wear a tank top underneath. And if that's too cold, I also wear thermal clothes underneath. Yes, it has a slightly higher neck, but it is black, so it doesn't show up that badly. And that also brings me to another point. Your well-being is more important than your costume. If you need thermal clothing underneath and it shows, don't care. Your warmth is more important. Same goes for any other costume adaptations that you need to make for your well-being. Glasses, just use them. Personally, I bought this pair of glasses from Charlie Temple for I think 30 euros. So this, this pair of glasses, I don't really care if it, if it falls and cracks. If it's going to be really expensive for you to buy an extra pair of glasses, then use your normal glasses. LARPing without glasses is not worth the headache. Your health goes first. Same goes for shoes. I'm personally of the opinion that your costume ends at your ankles because you will be walking around all day. You need comfortable footwear. I'm personally a really big fan of just darker colored shoes or walking shoes hiking shoes, they are neutral enough to fit with almost any LARP costume. You can make shoe wear covers, fabric covers that you can put over your shoes. For example, for my Uru costume, I just sewed a few layers of leather on top of each other that I drape over the shoes, so the hiking shoes are less visible. But if you need your shoes, you need your shoes. And that goes with anything in LARP. Your health goes first. Another tip I can give you for designing your costumes is accessorize, accessorize, accessorize. It is the small things that help you tell the story of your character. Is there something you have been given by other players in game? Is there something that you can put on your costume that reminds you of fallen friends or other people in the game? It helps. Personally, the most silly thing I have is this little crocheted eggplant. It's a sci-fi game and I bought this in-game. Lots of people walk around with crochet things on their costumes there. So in-game this makes sense and it's just nice and silly. And I think that that is pretty much what I wanted to say about designing costumes for LARP. The specific way of designing a costume is so very specific to you your character and the kinds of LARPs you play that I cannot give specific tips of oh you need a shirt like this or no my two most important tips are start simple and think about layers from that point if you have your simple kit and you have your layers of staying warm and keeping cool you can build it up over the events and just go from there and end up with awesome costumes I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope it was useful. If you'd love to see more costume breakdowns of some of my other characters, please let me know. I'd love to film them in the future. If you'd like to see more of my crafting stuff, I am going to upload more and more LARP videos because I sincerely enjoy filming these. Please subscribe and if you really like what I'm doing, you can support my crafting addiction on Ko-Fi. And with that, I hope you enjoyed watching and see you guys in next time. Mm -hmm.